This video is about bone chest set restoration. Now, once upon a time, before the days of the internet, if you wanted to buy an antique chest set, you could go into a, an antique shop and have a good look at whatever was on display and purchase it if you like it. Now with the advent of eBay, it's not quite so simple because although people are putting very good pictures of the chess sets on it isn't always possible to see just exactly what repairs have been done in the past. So, bone. Bone chess sets. Now bone is a readily available material and has been for hundreds of years and it can still be purchased in various processed shapes, rods, tubes, leg sections, pieces that are suitable for cutting out stems and so on. So getting even the clean processed bone that's sold, sold as dog treats is, is suitable for use if you were going to have a bone chest set. So getting the material is no problem. What does become somewhat difficult to assess is how much damage there is in a chest set that you see that you want to buy. Quite often you'll see a set that's been glued in the past and in the days before super glue we can have all sorts of glues being used, araldite, one of the two part glues which is particularly nasty because it, uh, it turns yellow with age um, and of course where a, where a piece has been broken and, and, and re-glued it does make it more difficult to get a good fit on the on the repair but if it's taken apart and then you know pegged and re-glued it can be a successful repair so for example here's a here's a king which has been damaged on the stem dropped dropped on the floor sometime during its life and the stem's broken it's been re-glued not very successfully it's a little bit unsightly so it needs to be drilled a bone peg is inserted and then the piece is then glued back together and the joint is cleaned up and hopefully made to look invisible. Here we see a red rook which has been dropped at some point and a piece has broken off one of the castellations. Well in that case the a piece of bone is added. This is carefully trimmed to shape and then any staining to match which isn't easy is done later. Um, you quite often see barrels with cracks in, they need to be filled and, and colour matched. Again it's a, it's a tricky operation getting the colours right and sometimes it's necessary to take a set that's been, been quite badly damaged for example, look at this ISQ set, okay we've got a new side member here in, in Mahogany a bishop's been made to suit and will be stained to match this uh, this colour. The alternative would be, for example, like this set, would be to bleach out and restain the whole of the red side. And this has come out with, you know, with rem quite remarkable, nice red colour that's uh, just a, a commercial dye which which is available, these unlined dies. And for example this small travel set, two or three pieces missing on the red side and but no chance of matching the colour exactly so bleach out the red pieces, make the new ones and then re-dye the whole thing giving us a nice complete set. The old, in the old days when the bone sets were being made they were restricted into the shapes they could use because of the thickness and shape of the bone. You were the makers were restricted to the, the sorts of shapes they could they could make. Nowadays, of course, they've got machines that can cut and shape like this, like these um, pen blank samples in wood, for example. Bone and wood can be cut and shaped to any to fit any form you want, and you can get all sorts of exotic shapes. But that wasn't the case in the past. So for example we've got these solid bodied 
pieces, always made in sections as we know, and screwed together. And um, we found that, you know, we've got these barleycorn with the barrel bodies, these thinner ones with the solid bodies, these plain barrel shapes with the barrel bodies again from this type of this type of leg section. And let's look at this set in particular. It was all pretty well together when it was bought. Um, there's a base missing off one white pawn. Well, that's no problem to make. We just get a suitable section of bone, cut out a disc, and machine it to match the other bases. This fellow here, what's occurred in this in this particular case is somebody's filed the threads off this chap. So he goes in, but he he really does need some attention to his threading. And what's occurred there is that some of the bases, at some points, the bases have come unscrewed and someone's attempted to put them back together and they've got them wrong and ended up with one, one that won't go. And quite often you can see that where the thread of the stem comes through the base a little bit. The old machinists always finish them off nicely so that you can tell where the bases have been put on wrong. But once it's been done, that's just going to have to be attended to and fixed with the new thread so it works properly. Where you've got these these old damages and repairs where the pieces have been dropped and broken on the thin section and glued, it's just a matter of keening the glue off, making a peg as I said before and fitting them back together. So the point being that all these repairs are quite possible to do. It looks in a bit of a bad way ear off the night look there, broken stem and a crack on there, king broken stem, but it's all repairable and if anyone wanted to contact me by email to get a quote on a repair I could certainly give them an estimate. Um, have a good look at your sets if you're going to buy them, try and estimate how much, how much damage there is and that will give you a, a guide as to what to pay for it because these things are becoming more expensive as they're becoming more popular we're starting to identify some of the makers that always creates an interest particularly if we can pin a set to Jake's or another maker of that uh, of that type thank you